Peggy 16. The way that Ninja Theory have reinvented The Legend of Monkey is kind of, um, for me, quite exciting in that it's it's using a lot of modern technology, it's set set in a post-apocalyptic world. We're in Prague right now, we've just come over here, just kind of working in Smetchki's studios, which is a fantastic studio. It's actually my favourite sounding studio that I've worked in. There's a lot to get into because you can get into emotions and you can get into action and uh, you can get into a lot of sadness and tragedy as well. So it's, it's got all of those elements that you want as a composer to, to, you know, to get very dramatic and very full on with orchestration. It kind of feels like there's a tribal language to it, which is still there. There's a lot of excitement, a lot of danger, a lot of threat, a lot of movement. Because of what's going on with Monkey, you have this sense of movement towards an inevitable conclusion. There's a sense of loss. He's lost a great deal, but he's a hardened soul. Great. Mm, really good. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed, actually. Excellent. <laughs> that was very good. All right. Yeah. How's it sounding? I want to make Second sure that priorities yeah. one, two, and three are, are okay and solid. I mean, you know, look, if we end up not doing everything, that's kind of accounted for. I mean, I talked mm. to Tom. I think for me, you know, it's, uh, I really enjoy the way in which uh, Monkey and Trip travel. I mean, they just have fantastic movement between them. It's very flowing, and I think um, it's, it's trying to get that sense of constant flow and momentum into the music, which actually drives a lot of the orchestration as well, and, and the way in which I'm trying to make the music work, um, I suppose, to, to give, give you a sense that you, you, you constantly infuse with energy. You know, when you're playing the game, that it never lets up in terms of that energy, um, and, and I think that's what's exciting about it. It just stays, uh, it, it just drives all the way through very strongly. With me, I work very closely with uh, Tom Colvin, and we ha- both have a sense of the narrative of the overall game. Um, but we pretty much work to the storyline. We're very used to looking at stuff and thinking, "Oh, that looks a bit wrong because of this." So, you know, we can be quite analytical and, and work. Out. But audio is very much more about the emotional, and we're not just talking about music. I mean, every element of audio is involved in, in pulling your emotions one way or another. The sound effects are probably the largest job for us uh, in the sound department. Everything has to be made from the bottom up. Every leaf moving, every bird, every creature that you see in the background. To keep things fresh, we use um, a really great Foley artist. We work with them on Heavenly Sword and again, we've got a really good working relationship with them. And they've had a lot of fun, um, you know, spending a day with lumps of metal and hitting them in different ways and going to a fairground and recording all the pistons in the machines and stuff, they do all of that. I think the most important thing for us was it for it to be visceral and exciting. Enslaved combat-wise, every single time the staff connects with a robot, you really want to feel that connection. I mean, another thing was just getting under the skin of all the different robot characters. The Sea Dog, for example, I think we we went through many different trial versions to get that sort of really nice, grinding, threatening sound as he's moving. Go back inside. Gonna have to fight him. 